I've been in dogs since 1991. We breed dogs that we want to train. I was out here in Western Nebraska riding Harleys and training dogs. Now you don't sugarcoat anything, and if you don't like it, tough. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Flatliner Kennels podcast with Chris Jobman. We are here for another episode and we appreciate you guys listening today. We've got a very special guest that I will let Chris introduce as we have him on for this episode and then the next episode two in a row. We are really excited to talk to him today. What's going on over there, Chris? Hi, Elliot. How are you? Just down in Texas, living the dream. So, yeah, we have a very special guest with us today, um, Eric Mighty Mouse Tizon from Show Me Retrievers in Missouri. Hi, Eric. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, guys. How are you guys? Good. Um, getting ready for the grand, getting ramped up for that. So tell us, um, I know, tell us a little bit about yourself, Eric, how you got started in dogs, what's your path. Tell us, Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and you know, bragging on yourself just a little bit. I know oh, that comes no, very easy for you. Here. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, th- this could be a very uh, this um, fun podcast. Um, I'm born and raised in Missouri. Um, I started off um, in dogs through coon dogs and beagles. Um, if anybody knows Wick Outdoor Works, um, that's a big coon and hunting community. That was right here in my hometown. That's how I... That's how I got into dogs. Um, throw the duck hunter out of this window. Um, I did not duck hunt until really in all honesty, until I started hanging out with Chris a lot. Um, so my, my, my dog background is through coon dogs and beagles. Um, like I said, I was born and raised here in Missouri, um, graduated high school, left for the Marine Corps, went out to California, which I was not very happy about. Uh, you don't send a Midwestern kid to the, west coast and expect them to function in the city but it was a great time out there um had uh had a five-year marine corps career um did not really get into dogs there i tried to um my uh, mos didn't allow me to um eas so i got out of the marine corps moved back home um to be with the rest of my family um oh in the time i was in the marine corps i got married and now actually had a daughter um anna which um, actually she'll she'll play a role in the FLK story. You know, she worked out there for a long time as well. Um, after I got back home, um, jumped around from job to job. Not really jumped around. Just had one for um, a couple of years, and then moved to another one. Um, I'm more quickly moving into my FLK story. Um, but but I, I, I don't want you to skip too far fa- too far quickly uh, past the How- beagles and the hound dogs because I'm I'm curious like. When you say you were into those types of dogs, what what exactly were you were you doing? You had them, you trained them, and I don't, I know nothing about those guys, so don't don't breeze over that. I find that to be fascinating. Okay, um, beagles and coon hounds are hounds are completely different than a retriever breed. Uh, a, a hound either has it or it doesn't. Um, there are some training, but most of the time it's uh, you let them go and you see if they got it. Um, yeah, I grew up. My dad bought. I have a three-year-old, uh, or three, three-year younger brother. His name was Justin. Um, so we were two peas in a pod. Uh, he got a dog. I got a dog. Dad got a dog. Um, those were our rabbit dogs. Uh, went rabbit hunting. I'm not going to say we necessarily trained those dogs. Those dogs were bought as adult dogs, and we just uh, we just hunted them. Uh, we would bring in a younger dog to run with our older dogs. And that's kind of how you break in a rabbit dog. You just put a young one with the old ones and they either do it or they don't. Um, you, you keep them or you move on from them. Um, grew, grew up doing that. Uh, we had a great, great time doing that. Moved into coon dogs as I got older. Um, I was little known fact or little, little known fact. I was not a very big fan of the dark at this time. So, uh, Went out with friends, uh, very rarely went out by myself. I got grounded every once in a while, and then I'd go by myself because I was forced to because I couldn't go hang out with my high school friends. 
grew up, my dad was president of Coon Club, kind of got that started in my area. I wasn't real big involved in that just because I was too little at the time. I was just a, a walk along guy. Got uh, one of my very first dogs given to me, an old man named Virgil Smith. Uh, went over there, was petting puppies. I took interest in this uh, little black and, tan, black and tan coon hound. He literally gave it to me on the spot. Uh, I expressed interest in coon hunting. He's like, here, Eric, take this dog and, and, and go be a coon hunter. So I took that dog home, and that that really started my, my life in coon hunting. Um, my dad did for sure, but that little dog right there really got me going. Most of my dogs that we coon hunted with were just my dad's dogs. I never really had personal coon dogs. They were always dad's dogs, and we just went hunting. Uh, that's kind of and there's there's I not a lot of training of, with those it's it's basically they either do it or they don't you sometimes as as small dogs you take you catch a live coon and you put them in like a little cage that rolls and the dogs just chase them around and you can make drags you can take old coon hide and put it on a rope and you drag it down through the fields um edge of the woods through the creeks hang it in a tree and kind of get a young dog started like that but most of the time and, and with our dogs, we weren't big coon dog trainers. We were more coon dog runners. We, we bought mm-hmm. dogs that had some natural instinct and we let them go. We just put them in the woods, put, to, put time and hours of hunting over that dog. And that dog figured it out or it didn't. Um, that's kind of the way we did coon dogs. I'm not saying that's there's some coon dog trainers out there cringing because they they train them and we didn't. Uh, that's just not how we did it. We we bought started dogs, well, like bought trainer trainer. dogs, <laughs> yeah. and went and ran them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so eighty percent of the public dog, dog story orders. and rabbits. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, okay. that's kind of how I got into dogs. I mean, I, I'm a. I'm a rural Missouri kid. Everybody has dogs out here. If you don't have a dog, um, you're not from rural Missouri. I mean, if and, and if you don't have a dog, wait wait a few hours and one will show up. <laughs> so there's there's <laughs> plenty of them running around that that we make our dogs. But yeah. so you're sure you said you had, so that's you kind said of you had a dog attack. Yep. So um, went through the Marine Corps. Uh, I got. I was notified of high cholesterol when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, young, dumb, I didn't pay it any attention. Uh, I knew I could. I always say I thought I could outrun it. Um, and that by that, I mean I was. I always just say physically fit enough that I didn't think it would affect me. And it didn't. It didn't. From the time I was 18 until the time I got out of the Marine Corps, uh, no harm, no foul, or at least I thought. Uh, I'm outside working one day. Um, I'm actually working storm. I was a tree trimmer at the time. Um, I cleared the trees away from the power lines was my job. And we're, we had a tornado come through and it just destroyed part of St. Louis. And we're in there cleaning up, um, doing the relief efforts on it. And uh, I get uh, classic heart attack signs. Uh, you know, I get neck pain, chest pressure, um, and I started vomiting and I ignored it. Um, shouldn't have. I try to tell everybody now, you know, when you get those signs, go. Uh, but I ignored it. Um, I actually ignored it for two days. Uh, I, I, oh I've been gosh. having a heart attack. You're lucky you're not entire- dead. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have no no idea. So this actually he does, ties he does a little bit. Actually, yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah, I a little he actually bit. does a little bit. <laughs> I had a heart attack December this- 18th. <laughs> Yeah, this actually ties into waterfowl a little bit. Uh, I hunted with some older guys. They're old now, but at the time they were just older than I was. So um, had a had a great spot, a bunch of geese for using, two, 250 geese. To us, that's a bunch. Um, I call these guys up um, with, that, with that storm. It was an ice storm, not a tornado is what it was. And... Uh, so we got called off of work. So I called these guys up and said, Hey, you want to go hunting? I'll go set everything up. So I set, went there and I set up all the decoys all while basically having a heart attack. Um, set up all the decoys. Um, we go hunting, the geese come in, we shoot them. Um, good old times, high fives. Everybody separates, goes home. Um, that night I'm eating dinner. Um, my little son challenged me to put push up competition. So we're, 
we're banging out some push-ups right there on the floor and I go to bed and I wake up that night um, and it is, the pain is intense, intense. Um, mm. I knew I was in trouble. Um, we live, like I said, we live in rural Missouri. So the nearest hospital is probably 45 minutes away. And instead of calling the ambulance, I woke my wife up and I say, Hey Jen, you're going to have to take me to the hospital. And, uh, she, she does what every beautiful lady does. She gets up and she wants to take a shower and put on her clothes and she jumps in the shower <laughs> and she starts, you know, just turns on the water and I walk in and I, I stopped the shower and I was like, I don't think you understand. I need to go now. And uh, she rushed me to the hospital, and sure enough, um, I was in full-blown heart attack mode. Um, had a heart attack, got two stints put in, survived it. Um, definitely, definitely counting my blessings um, through all these times, you know. So, uh, you don't have much time. You, you have really... something like three hours from the time your heart attack starts until you can get permanent heart. You are so fortunate to wait that long. Someone was looking uh, out for you. There's no mistaking I was. I did suffer um, quite a bit of heart damage from that heart attack. Mm. Uh, my my heart function went down to like the 60 percentile or something. Man, I wish Jennifer was in here. She could tell you to the T. Um, she's basically like my heart doctor now. Um, that's my wife. So, yeah, I definitely lost heart function. Um, I definitely wasn't okay. Um, there, there's no, there's no doubt. Uh, and they did the old heart attack, um, the stents where they went up through my leg and into my heart. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I had to not lift anything for a certain amount of time. And for me, that was tough. I mean, I, I couldn't even, I was already an amateur dog trainer at that point, And I literally could not walk my dog around on a leash because the pressure on the leash technically was more than I should be exerting myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm definitely lucky. Um, and that's, that was my first one. <laughs> so uh, have you had, story that your only one you've had or have you had, you had more? Have you had, I had a second more than one? one. I actually had oh, a Widowmaker when I was out with Chris. Good Lord. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, that was a good one. I'm a very, it, yeah, yeah, it was, it was crazy, but yeah, after well, my I, first one, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep talking. Oh, I was going to say, after my first one, um, this is really, in all honesty, um, the very first initial conversation Chris and I ever had about FLK. Um, at that time, he literally sent me a text and, oh, no, he made a he made a, a post on on Facebook that asking about um, getting a new trainer. And I uh, and, jokingly. And, and Elliot, let, me, let me tell you the story about everybody that about Eric and I. We, I can tell you the exact day we met. I was running a qual at Valley in Nebraska, and that was on June 10th, 2016. And I was running a dog. I was running Tweety and Queen, and I think that was it. I was only running a couple of them. But I met Eric that day on um, June 10th, 2016 in Omaha at Valley. And he was running. You were running ammo, I believe, right? I was running ammo. Yeah, as a yeah. freshly two year old, thinking I knew what I was and, doing. Man, I tell you, I've never seen such a five foot three ball of energy in my entire life. And I'm not talking about ammo. I'm talking about Eric running around, <laughs> spinning. I've never seen anything like it. But that's that's the first day we met. Is actually in 2016, and I did. I put a thing on Facebook looking for an assistant. And then I, did you reach out to me? Or did I reach out to you? It was one of those funny, funny texts. I said, Hey, if I come be your assistant jokingly, you know, I said, Hey, if I come be your assistant, do I get your duck hunting too? And <laughs> he literally replied with, yes. <laughs> so uh, that, that started conversations. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. I remember that because that was in the summer and then, um, that was in the it was the summer of next year, I think. Or was it that year? Anyway, it was in the summer sometime, and he. It was funny because he just put it off, put it off. And he would out of the blue, he's like, "Hey, have you found anybody yet?" Nope, I've not found anybody. You know, would you be interested? He was like, "Ah, oh, let me talk about it." And I don't, and I don't know that you might know the exact story, but he literally, Elliot, shows up at the kennel unannounced, drove all night. Pulled in, and one of the, Chelsea, who was working for me at the time, says, "Hey, there's some little short guy here, w wandering around looking at stuff." I'm like, "What?" And he just <laughs> literally drove all night, just like surprise sneak attack us. 
<laughs> right? You, boy, yeah, you're bringing back memories. I would have I would have left that out. I totally forgot about that. Part. I mean, he literally yeah, uh, yeah. sneak attacked us. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, so here we are. Yeah, we're well, we're talking about it and uh man, there's just it's the world we live in. There's just so much stuff that's hidden, you know what I mean, or it can be blown out of proportion through a phone call or a text or something. So, um Chris just said, "Hey, you do you know anybody who wants this? And I, we started conversating back and forth. And, uh, I mean, it was laying heavy on my heart on what I should be doing at that time. I'm sitting there thinking I am done with the, with the normal world. I don't want to chase a dollar anymore. Um, it's not fun. Um, mm-hmm. I want to do something that I really love. And at that time I was an amateur trainer and I was, I was in it. I loved it. Every, I mean, I, I would work and I would go home and train. I would take my dog to work, put him in the back of my truck. And if I couldn't make it home before dark set in, I would go train close to work or wherever I could find and then, then go home. So I had the heart attack. Chris talks to me. So I'm, I'm in it. So I go home and I'm talking to Jennifer, my wife about it. And she is a traveling guru. Um, why she stays with me. And I, I, I am an anchor. I love being at home. She is, she would be, she would never be at home if she could travel all, all the time. And uh, she's like, let's go. I'll, I'll start packing right now. I mean, that's that's the conversation we had. Hey, what do you think about this? And I mean, she was, she's pushing me out the door. She, she's filling up my truck with gas and, and locking my seatbelt and saying, let's go. You know, so um, I'm like, whoa, whoa, hang on. Let, let's let's see what this is all about. So Chris is right. I literally it's weighing on my mind, weighing on my heart. I jump in my truck. I drive all the way to Nebraska. I don't, I don't want the fluff. I want to see what the inside of FLK looks like, how it operates, who Chris is, how he's treating his people, everything. I, I just throw the fluff out the window. So I literally, I, I did, I showed up, the kennel door raised up and I walked in and uh, just started talking. I didn't even introduce myself. I just started talking to everybody. <laughs> And uh, he didn't, he just, did I know. Like, didn't even introduce himself, just walked in. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Worked. I, I wish Chelsea was on here. Such that a would be weirdo. I, Such a weirdo. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny now that I look back about at it. You know, I could have easily been a client showing up. You know what I mean? Uh, that that happens out there. Clients show up and, you know, you forgot. Uh, Chris forgot to tell us that they were coming or something. And here they are. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I could have been a client. So I guess to you guys, it wasn't such an abnormal thing to have somebody show up and walk in. But uh, for me, it definitely was. But, yeah, when I when I hang out for uh, a week, a couple of days, it, yeah, I can't it was remember. It was a while. It was a while yeah. for sure, just to see how it all worked and and, yeah, uh, heck, and the rest was history. You, you, we came I, out and yeah, I stayed but, in your house. I mean, you invited me like, "Hey, stay here, stay in my house." Yeah, so yeah. that's I guess that's how yeah. it really all got started. And, and Tweety actually, Tweety did win that qual that that year in, in Valley, so that she did win that qual. But and then I, I you know, ever since then, the rest was history. <laughs> Yeah, she won, and of course she was. It was it was not even close. Yeah, I was waiting. For, I I can't believe we skipped over that until now. I was I was really waiting for that to come up. It was uh, actually one of the, probably the better one of the better dog performances I think I've ever had in my career was was her in the four series was 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 incredible. A big huge water series. It was it was actually pretty incredible. But uh, she did a nice job. It was. And uh, so there's Eric, a lot of people. How, there how did you go ahead? When when was your heart attack? How much longer after our heart attack was um, this opportunity with FLK? Oh, I'm What's I'm laying on there? my back in the hospital. I, I'm literally laying on my back, being on monitors and texting Chris. I mean, that's how close this was. Well, that's initial so it was conversations right after. It was I, right yeah, after. he hit me. He hit me in the weak moment. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it was during think, it. It was during so, it. I. I had my heart attack December 18th and it played crazy mental games with me. I got in pretty quick. I was in getting the stint within two hours when I started feeling it. Um, so I got in a lot of fashion, you did, but it played really weird mental games in my head about reality life. All, I mean, it just did weird things to me for a while for, I'd say for three, four weeks, it took me to kind of start like mentally feeling Normal. Do you think that the heart attack played in? Because that was pretty impulsive on your part. 
So do you think the heart attack played into that a little bit? Just like, I'm out? Yeah, but Elliot, it really wasn't that impulsive. It, it, we, we're making it sound like it happened in a two- or three-day period. This was months of, hey, have you found anybody yet? No, not yet. Are you going to come out? I don't know. Hey, you found anybody yet? And this was months. Okay. This oh, was so the conversation over the started summer. before the heart attack, and it just went. Yeah, this was this was a long, drawn out process. I mean, literally, it was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't like a week, a week deal. Oh, I wish I could go back to our text messages. I, I feel like, <laughs> it, on contrary, I, I felt like it happened overnight. You know, so oh, no, yeah, not mean, even close. Did did it weigh? Did my heart attack weigh on my decision making at the time? Uh, yes, I mean one hundred percent. Now, eh, like when you say like messing with your head or head games, I don't know if it had that on me. I think it it gave me a different look at life. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, everybody grows up, you know. Hey, we want big houses, nice cars, and I think I was. I was in that mode of my life, you know, like uh, the more money I can make, the bigger house I can have, um, the, the, the nicer truck I can drive. Uh, so I got, I lived the all American life. I had a blonde haired, blue eyed wife. I had a little boy, a little girl on the Labrador retriever and I belonged to the union. You know what I mean? I mean, I was, I was living the life. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, you could write that that's textbook American living, you know, and it just right. gave me an, an opportunity to, to slow down and realize what was important to me. And that dollar, I mean, still to this day, that dollar doesn't mean anything to me. Um, my mm-hmm. family, my time, um, happiness, that's, that's what drives me. Um, you can, I, I would, I say this, I, I can't run a business or a kennel without dollar bills, but that dollar bill doesn't mean anything to me. It's the, it's the fun, the, the enjoyment I have mm-hmm. in the accomplishments we're out here making and, and a great life, you know, um, it's stressful. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We can get in that later, later, but, uh, it's still stressful, but yeah, that, you know, laying there and almost dying or feeling like I was, about to die just gave me a different perspective to look at things a little bit differently and realized what my priorities were. And, uh, that dollar didn't, it wasn't a priority. Yeah. That, that's, that's it. So you, you're out at flat in flatlander, you get hired. How, what year was that, that you got hired out there? Oh man, Christopher, was it that, was it that, Oh, it's like a nightmare. I'm trying to forget it. Um, oh, was it that summer? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, if, if I had Jennifer <laughs> here, she could tell you my heart attack date, and then yeah, I would I know. I think it was you know 2000, I mean? um, three years. I think it was 2017, the summer of 2017. I'm trying to okay. It's like a nightmare, Ellie. I'm trying to forget it. But it was like 2017. <laughs> Whatever. Because you're with me for three yeah. years, and you've been on for your own for three years, for your, yeah, I think it was two thousand summer of two thousand seventeen, the end of the summer of two thousand seventeen, or something like that, somewhere in there. But he, Eric, had a lot of help from another trainer out in Missouri that we can't we can't um, yeah not forget either. Eric, tell us about that story about that. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess let's go back to dogs. Um, I'm a big deer hunter, big big fishermen at this time. Um, when I'm not deer hunting, I'm planting food plots. I'm doing something for deer. Um, I'm looking for sheds. So every deer hunter is off season. It gets boring. So what do I want a shed dog? So I go out and I, I buy a shed dog. Actually, I got a free dog off of Craigslist. It was half bloodhound and a <laughs> half Labrador retriever. Um, mistake one. <laughs> um, yeah. so I I get to train in this dog, and we have a local local trainer here named Joe Rabbit. Um, great guy. Um, got me started in this whole game, um, and he leads to ammo. Uh, I got this little dog. I don't even remember this dog's name. It's a freebie dog. I'm a tree trimmer. Uh, the Joe tells me that he'll force fetch it and collar condition it if I trim some trees over his kennel. Little he trade he. he 
I, I cut down trees for him. He trains my dog for me. Well, I get this dog over to him and he, he calls me. He's like, Eric, this dog doesn't have it. This dog is, this dog don't know how to walk on a leash and it's not gonna know how to walk on a leash with no matter how much <laughs> training I give it. And he was right. I mean, this was not a good dog. It wasn't a good animal. I mean, th- he had health problems. He wasn't, he wasn't able to learn. I know that sounds terrible, but it just was not a, it was a farm bred dog that should have never happened. Um, and that's why he was free. So Joe got, uh, um, wanting me to have a good dog. So he was having a litter coming up out of his dog recon, which is still one of the, one of the nicest dogs I've ever ran. Um, he has this litter and he's like, Hey, come by. I got a puppy for you in trade, uh, of, of this tree work. So I come by and he hands me a little ammo and, uh, kind of that's really where my retriever story begins. Um, Amel started off as supposed to be in the shed dog, um, go find deer horns for me. And he is, I say he's never picked one up, but he didn't pick up a shed until he was way, way older in life. Um, I learned that he could pick up ducks and that just started a craze in me. Uh, Joe, Joe, Joe had a litter mate. So we would work both of those dogs at the same time. I would go to work. I'd get off of work. I'd drive straight to Joe's house. We would work dogs. Uh, that's what I did. That's like, that's pre heart attack or that's during right there before the heart attack happened. So that's, well, ammo was two by then because, um, the, we, I ran that same qual that Chris, the Chris won, unfortunately. Um, anyways, I made, I made it to the water blind. I, I, I had no business being there. Let's most, just say that. But, am- uh, I, I was trying, team. I was trying, that's that. I, I was trying and when we get into this and we end up getting into the Chris looking at me and creating an HRCH master hunter, this is that time. This is that time that I created this HRCH master hunter at this time. So Amel's a finished dog. Amel's a master dog by this time. He's running that qual. That's when I had the heart attack and I moved out to Chris's. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're when you're so, out with Chris, what tell us about that experience? And you two, Chris, you add into this also, kind of what was. I imagine you still had a huge learning curve from amateur to professional trainer. There's probably still plenty that you needed to. Chris, Chris his, we monster, monster, curve. Monster, monster learning curve. Monster. What were his it's biggest like, flaws? It was like teaching monkeys to use tools for the very first time. It was a huge, <laughs> are, huge are, curve. Are we talking about what, what Chris's and, flaws were? Right. <laughs> I have a lot of those. Yeah. But we're gonna have his wife so, on at some point. Just she and I are gonna do a podcast, and she's just gonna unload. Oh, that, that's oh, get get in line. Please, please invite me back for twenty minutes. Of that I, I would like to conversate <laughs> with her about Chris. The Rose, please, the Chris Jobman yeah. Rose. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Don't forget, we Mars could, that would be great. That would be we just need to do a yes. live one and video it from that purple whatever steak place by FLK, and we need to bring in every all the people we can. We'll have a roasted jobman. <laughs> yeah, I'll well, show it, up for it, that. It, I was pretty, I was pretty rough on Eric when he first started with me. I wanted to see if he could, he could do it. I do a lot of, I like to test people's fortitude, if you know what I mean. And 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 I learned real real quick with him is is the more he was a great student and pupil because. I'm old school, you know, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. We're old school when it comes to coaching styles, you know, I'm a Bobby Knight type of person. And, um, I just put it on him. You know, I really, I laid on him a little bit and show you some tough love. And I told him what it was all about. Cause I'll be honest with you. Eric came in pretty, he's pretty excited about himself. He thought this ammo dog was something and, and he was a nice dog. He thought he was something boy. And, and I, and I put it on him a little bit to see, and, you know, I made it to the point where he's either going to do it or he's going to go home. And, um, he was the better, you know, best pupils because you could like a, like a dog, right? The more you, you can lay on him a little bit and they just learn and they try harder and they don't give up. And, and Eric, there's one thing about Eric. He's a lot of things, but a quitter, he is not. And, um, I guess you could tell everybody the story about, you know, ammo and, you know, all you have is an HRCH master hunter. This is. This, this was the, this was, I, when I said that is he's either going to stay or he's going to quit one of the two. Yeah, that's uh that is a story. Chris, was that before our first trip to Texas or after? That was before. 
I think that was our, before. That was the first. That was the first summer you were here. That was the first summer okay, you were okay. here. And then, then okay. we went the next spring. We went to Texas. Okay. Okay. So let's hear it. We, okay, let's hear it. This is a this. We could have a podcast over this whole argument this day. I, I don't know if it's an <laughs> argument or. Uh, it wasn't even an argument. Uh, I was right. Pretty well it, excited. <laughs> I I hate to say that, but he is he is right. So. I'm before I moved out to Chris. I'm an amateur. I pour my heart and soul into this dog, this this ammo. He is everything I got. Um, he he takes up all my extra money. He takes up all my time, uh, all my extra time, taking time away from my family, taking my weekends up. I'm building this this dog, this ammo. And this is all as an amateur. So I, this dog. As Rhett Riddle says, this dog is my heart dog. This dog means everything to me. So I move out to Chris, and Ammo was a good dog. Don't 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 let Chris fool you. He was a great dog at that time. And I go out there, and I am he's running. A, he's I'm a great doing, dog now. He's I am doing the classic, now. the classic new guy thing. You know, I'm a. Uh, I'm running ammo against Chris's truck. You know, I'm not running them against, but I'm running them on the same setup. So I got this brand new HRCH Master Hunter, and he is running Grand Champion, Master National Dog, Qualified All Age Dog. I mean, all those titles on this dog and then this dog. Um, the entire side of his truck was those dogs. And, you know, maybe Am and maybe Ammo did the same thing as they did on Monday. And then on Tuesday, he looked like I should have never brought him to FLK. You know, like he had that big of a learning curve. So I start comparing him. You know, this is this is my dog and this is where real dogs are. But at that time, I thought Ammo was a great, great dog. He was a great dog. And we are out running the setup. And it is it is a grand master national type setup. It is a big in your face you either got a dog that can do it or you got a dog that's it needs a lot of help and ammo struggles. seems like every setup he does is like that as far as i can tell well i took georgie out there and felt I, like a fool for a while you got it you got you and, what, and, 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 what, and i've minute. got some good dogs now and i've got some good dogs now but when there i had some hammers when he was had ammo that's and what i was gonna ammo say like a damn starter dog I got. Mm -hmm. I had. I had yeah. fifteen hammers. I mean, as good as I have right. ever touched, yeah. or more. He is not. He is not kidding. I was going to rewind to that in a minute, but uh, so we're we're running this setup, and of course, ammo struggles, and I get him through it or something, or um, or he does. He lines the blind or something. So I'm feeling myself, and uh, Chris turns around and looks at me, and he says, "The only thing you've ever built was an HRCH Master Hunter, and uh, fire." I'm talking about my heartburn. My, I mean, my my. I went flush. My face is hot. I am pissed. I am either going to uh, bite Chris or I'm going to leave. I mean, that's all there was to this. I am pissed. He just insulted my dog. He insulted me. He insulted everything I put into this dog. And fire. I'm, I'm feeling fire right now talking about it. You know what I mean? It brings back emotions. I was pissed. <laughs> pissed and you know normal chris job and he's saying something but he's really not getting around to what he's actually really saying uh it's a uh, it's a uh, the communication barrier kind of sucks <laughs> so what he's really trying to tell me is <laughs> i have a big step until i get a great dog you know what i mean instead of saying hey bud you know hey small steps equal big steps and ammo will get there he just insulted my dog and threw him in the trash can i mean it was it was demoralizing <laughs> but what he really was trying to tell me and, and we get to this you know through conversation um is hey the hrch and the master dog of the world isn't the end you know that's that's a stepping stone to having great dogs and that is really really hard to hear when you just were an amateur and it was everything you could do to make an HRCH master hunter. I mean, that just, I poured my you life. You just didn't understand that what the top level, like a grand dog looked like. You just didn't understand that at that I, point. I, I, at that time, I probably didn't even know what the grand was. 
I mean, that's an honest yeah. fact. I thought an HRCH was the top. Um, and then the master dog yeah. was the top. I, I didn't know what the grand was, or if I did, it was, it was, it was elusive enough that the, the, the peak of the mountain, you know, I'm, I'm standing on one peak and I don't realize if I look behind me that the mountain behind me is twice as tall, you know? So I'm standing mm-hmm. on my own little mountain thinking I've, I've built this great dog, but I was That's Elliot. I was just giving the, him a pep talk. Yeah, I was just giving yeah, him a pep talk. Was. That's all that was I was a doing. Failed pep talk. It sounds no, like no, it didn't fail at all. <laughs> no, it did not. Okay, tell everybody what Ammo is now. Uh, yeah, Ammo is a nine-time Grand Champion, four-time Master Net, or yeah, four-time Master National Hall of Fame dog. So he's he's pretty exceptional. It 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 did nice. like my fire. <laughs> nice. You there is no doubt that I, fire I would have been lit. If that fire wouldn't have been lit, he would have rested on his laurels, and not oh, Emma would not be what now. he is today. One hundred percent. There's, there's no doubt that has some truth to it. Yes, I mean he. There's, <laughs> you, you go through life and you find those defining moments, like hey, you know that that first heart attack really played heavy on me, and I made a big change. Um, that conversation right there, it almost made me quit, but it it also gave me, uh, man, when it sucked, whenever, you know, it was raining outside, whenever it was super hot outside, whenever I didn't feel like running dogs anymore, it kept it. There's no doubt it kept me going. There's no doubt. I, and I still say it to myself to this day. The only thing you ever built was an HRCH Master Hunter, you know, that that will find a new man in you. I promise you. If you like this dog game and somebody tells you that and they mean it, uh, it, 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 it hurts, but it, it, it's, it'll, it'll build you. It'll build you. It, it, there's if no you doubt. Let it hurt that. you. <laughs> it either makes you better or if you, that's like, I'm the Bobby Knight of the dog training world. Eric T's on is my student. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more like the, the karate the karate kid when the, the when the when the Padawan Yo, surpasses the master. No, no. Daniel son. Eric Daniel son. Oh, so, yeah, so anyway, yeah, so Eric and I started a it was we had a we had, he worked for me for three years and, and um we were we were we did a good job. We were a good, real good real really, really good team together. I mean we we passed a bunch of dogs, we tiled a bunch of dogs, his work ethic passed you know, reached my work ethic and above. Um, you know, we just really got after it. We fed off the off each other as far as, you know, energy level and um, camaraderie and companionship and work ethic. And, and we just really competitive as well. You know, if we hear, oh, this kennel did this, like, let's do I do this. And let's, you know, it, it's, it was really fun to be with somebody that was, you know, wanted to be part of something bigger than himself. And I'm not saying that we're like that, but unless you've been around somebody like that, it, it, it was, it, we had a lot of fun for three years, boy. It wasn't all cupcakes and roses, but I'll tell you what, we had a, we had a ball. We, we got after it for sure. No, there's How much of that hunting no did you get a, to be a part of out there? Oh, we hunted all the time. Oh, I outshoot him like literally every time we go hunting. <laughs> Like literally, it, it's ridiculous. I'm like, hey, Eric, here comes one. Boom, boom. I'm like, I just have to finish it. I mean, we hunted all. We hunted every day together, almost. So he watched me shoot a lot of birds can, in front of him. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, if he's bringing that up, he's he's stopping. He's stopping it before it starts because he knows that's not true. So <laughs> let, let, talk about hunting. My very first year there, I was the young dog guy to trying to be the advanced dog guy uh, right underneath Chris. And, uh, and at that time we still had, um, DHO, the outfitter, um, and Chris checked out to go guide and Rob checked out to go guide. And it was me training all these young dogs. I'll never forget it. Uh, I had 17 dogs in force fetch at one time, all these young dogs, and I am in their pension ears and, there, da ding, da ding, da ding. My phone is going off with these videos and pictures <laughs> of them beating ducks up. I'm talking about just just <laughs> kicking them to the curb uh, on Rob and 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 Chris. You know, so I'm sitting in there. It that was probably the biggest head game of my life is trying to stay sane and do a great job when two miles down the road they are whooping on ducks and I'm sitting in there not huh. doing anything. 
Now, later, as I stayed at FLK, I got plenty of hunting in, you know, but uh, that first year, it, it was a little bit of a struggle to keep my head in it uh, since I was sitting in their pinching ears and, and telling every dog to heal. So, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah you were, you were, you were stuck in the kennel. Hunt, hunting was great. Hunting was great out there. Um, it's the best I've ever had it, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so Eric, you, tell you, us about a, yourself now. You're, you're with us for three years, right? Um, Ellie, do you have more questions about FLK when he was there? Well, I do. I, I'm just curious as to, I mean, you kind of went in as an amateur and came out as a professional. Yeah. Well, what, and what you, Eric did when he was with us is, is he was the young dog guy to start out with. And he worked his way up real, real quick. I mean, exceedingly quick. So then, you know, he started being the HRC guy and he would, you know, I'd run mostly the AKC stuff. He'd go run all the HRC stuff. And then he started just running everything. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, he ran AKC stuff for me. He ran HRC stuff for me. Um, back then we could only run, what, 12 dogs at the Grand. So we started running my, you know, my Grand crew, um, some of my Grand dogs, <clears throat> that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, he, then, then we were a true team when he was out there. I mean, we literally went all over the place, just, you know, riding together and hanging out and training and, and he would, you know, take dogs and it was so funny. I, I'll never forget uh, this. Is, he's going to hate me when I say this story, but I say him to his very first master test by himself. I, I was going right? to bring it up. I was going to bring it up. And I'm going to tell you, we, he had to go to Colorado and I knew it was a tough test. I knew it was hard judges. And I knew it, and I and I was trying to prepare him for it, and um, you know, for, for a few weeks, right? And I'd be like, okay, if this dog does this, he, he, he like, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'd say, hey, if this dog does this, I got it, I got it. If this dog, I got it, I got it. I'd say, okay, you got it. And I sent him down there by himself to a meat grinder, <laughs> and I said, how'd you do this weekend? <laughs> and Eric, you could. You tell a story about how that all went down. I, I literally <laughs> said, you know what? He's going to have a hard lesson this weekend. Here it comes. It, it was, it was tough. Let, I'm going to rewind it just to kind of, kind of touch on some of the things Elliot was talking about. <laughs> I, I went through that first summer, um, uh, little dogs, but I, I got plenty of big dog action that first summer, especially my big dogs. The, the two I brought there, well, I called them big dogs at the time. They were running with the big dogs. So they were big dogs. Um, but got plenty of action, did all the little dogs, all the transition dogs, was prepping dogs for Chris um, with a watchful eye, with, with Chris sitting over my shoulder as much as he could, um, making sure that I'm doing it the FLK way. He, he doesn't bring that up enough. Um, I mean, when I got there, we called it the FLK way. It, it was – this is the way we did things. Uh, I still – uh, this, a lot of the things I do today is the FLK way. We, we, there's a rhyme and a reason for everything. And even if it doesn't, I tell, try to tell everybody one plus one, to, it always equals two, but so does a half and a half and a half and a half. That's, you got to get the results. But my time at FLK, I went through all that, 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 that first summer, that winter of, of, wanting to quit because everybody's stuck hunting but and me. let me and let me we, let me interrupt you a second Eric. yeah let me interrupt you just a second and elliot you what you may or may not know about this I me mean, i am weird as as hell like you I have to put that. the collar on <laughs> you have to put the collar on a certain way you have to put my clips on a certain way i mean it is you do it like because that's how it needs to be done and, and when he says the flk way it's not only training and it's literally little every little thing you do throughout the day is a certain you have to do it a certain way, right? It's, di right. it's a very disciplined, <clears throat> it's a very disciplined day. Right. And if you stay yeah. disciplined yeah. and you take care of the little tiny things and uh, dog training is, is all about the very, very minute details. All these little to minute details make one humongous product, right? Right. And right. if you pay attention to all the little things, then your end product is going to be great, as great as it can be. But if you skip the little things, the way I think about it is if you, if you skimp on the little things, then what else are you going to skimp on? So if I want you to put a collar on this way, you put a collar on this way. If I want you to lock it this way, that's because of how it's supposed to be done. Right. right? And it's, yeah. That's how that's, that's, when he says the FLK way, it's not, it's just a whole process of the day. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Elliot, I'm, I'm going to tell you how ingrained that was. My collars are still put on the same way to this day. I'm, I train today. They were put on that way today. And my latches are put on the same way today at my kennel. Um, it is, I yeah. still follow those every little, just like building a dog. You build those foundations and they're solid. They stay, you know? So um, we, we get, done through that winter um chris is back in the kennel we're dog training and we leave for texas my very first summer in texas was probably the most beneficial time to me as a dog trainer ever um chris and i left not sure how many dogs we took to texas it was a bunch it was 40s in the 40s maybe 50s and it was a pile talk about work um, get up every morning. It was just Chris and I, and I'm the low man. He's the guy who owns the place. I am the guy that works there. So I am doing, and plus it's my job. I am supposed to take that weight off Chris. That That's my job. So I'm in there trying to do everything I can to make it as easy for Chris to function throughout training as he can. But in reward of all that, I am getting, I'm getting a one-on-one seminar Every single day, I am literally sitting in Chris's back pocket all day. Um, we're shooting out a winger, so I am riding around on the ATV, loading wingers, um, messing with electronics, and I'm coming back and I'm sitting right there, or I'm standing at the line and Chris is sitting behind me, picking me apart. Chris has the saying, "Put your big boy panties on." Um, I, I still to this day, I, I tell people that because I went through that. I went through Chris sitting behind me and correcting my left hand backs. Hey, you're reaching too far forward. Hey, you took a step and you didn't even know you took a step. If you take a step with that cast, it means something different than just giving that cast. Hey, your angle's not right. Um, those few months in Texas it was the biggest jump I personally have ever had in, in, in dog training, um, through my life. Uh, it was, it was great. Um, I still, go back and think about how great that time was for me. I worked my butt off, but I, like I said, I was paying for a, a one-on-one seminar every single day. It, it right. was great. It was right. great. Yeah. I haven't, you know, so, it's been a while since I've done that where, where we had the time to, and he's right. I mean, I'm pretty picky when it comes to things, but, but he, like I told you, he was one of the, you know, the best student because he would listen to me and do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it wasn't, he didn't have an ego coming into it. Well, he did, but not when it came to dog training. Cause I knew way more than he does. And I still do. But, um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, uh, he's right. It was just an all day long thing. I mean, it was literally all day. And he's like, I know how to give a right angle, angle back. No, you don't, you don't know how to do it. And, it, it, and it, we handle a lot of like to this day, I'm, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that, yeah, that text there's, is there's no question. So yeah, then the master test uh, when we got back up there, uh, there was a there's actually a really great t- test that happened between there. Um, Chris and I at that time you can only take twelve dogs, so Chris Chris is handling twelve free grand dogs, and I'm handling ten of the other finished dogs. And Chris, we had one fail, or did we go perfect that weekend? Actually, it, we had one. We had you were actually handling um, twelve as well because I, I just, that actually just poked, po- popped up a lot of my memories the other day. We went twenty three of twenty four. That was Eric's first um, FLK hunt test on the road with us. Nice. We went twenty three of twenty four. Fantastic. Yeah, so, I didn't yeah. lose when the I met dog. Jane Kirker, I, I didn't. I didn't lose the dog. I think I failed the dog. Let's just get that out of the way. I, I failed the dog. So it was. It was dog, Barley. It was Barley. <laughs> yeah, Barley went the Barley mode I, right at the end know. of a blind. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but So that hunt just happened, and, and many more happened after that. And then, you know, I want to I want to run Masters. Uh, uh, I love finished, but I, I want to go run Masters. I ran Masters as an amateur Chris, let me let me take the wheel. Let me take some stress off you. Let me give you a free weekend. Let me go run these dogs. And uh, so I spent my first, I don't know, four or five master tests just going with Chris, um, not running any client dogs. I'm just going to run my personal dogs, the two that I had, um, kind of the break-in period for Chris to see if I can handle it. 
and uh, I passed my dogs or maybe I failed one or something like that. But uh, I, I, I did just fine. And yes, there is no doubt uh, that very first master test that I ever ran with FLK, we ran down in Colorado and it it was a meat grinder. There is stuff there. I came. I was humbled. I mean, I called Chris. I called Chris on the way back from that test and I told him the results and I said, man, I have, I have no excuses. I have nothing to say. I'll be back to work tomorrow. You know, he's like, no, take, take tomorrow off, take the morning off. I said, I'll, I'll be back there before you will. I promise you, you know, I mean, it was, it was just one of those things that, uh, uh, it it was eating at me. You know, I, I wasn't, um, the product I just gave those dogs weren't the product that was just put out there, you know, and I, and I knew it and uh man, Monday morning, come back around and we were, we were right back at it. But yeah, that was a, that was a humbling test. I was, I was failing grand champions at a master test. I'm going to just tell you how bad well, it was. And, it was and, not and, a good look for Eric in your, Yeah. But in, in your defense, they, um, there were some other trainers down there as well, and they had it in. The judges had it in for everybody basically that weekend, and were trying to prove a point. So um, it's not all your fault, but a big lesson learned. I mean, for sure. Yeah, but I ran some great dogs down um, there. When I very first got to FLK, you could literally start and hold one on Chris's truck, and um, and I I know this just from running dogs and stuff like that. I could grab a dog, the first dog, and run it, and. Uh, you no, know, when when Chris would let me run his truck, we call it wrecking race cars. When he let me wreck his race cars, I would wow. go grab Breaker, and Breaker was, was a so grand champion all the way to qualified all age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so but hard to watch. You Elliot. got hunters. I mean, he was you slamming my race it. cars into the walls. I'm like, oh my god, he's wrecking my race cars. I'm like, I, I can't watch this no more. I'm gonna get another diet Mountain Dew. I can't take it. <laughs> the, the entire truck was grand champions that that were qualified all age as well. I mean, mm-hmm. it was the you couldn't have gone very many places, if any, in the country and seen those caliber dogs one after another. And I, I was like a little greedy kid with candy, you know what I mean? All these all these were at my fingertips when Chris wasn't around, and I got to run them. So Chris made a comment to Eileen one time. Probably where I wasn't supposed to hear, but I did hear it. And he said, I was running Tweety, and uh, he told Eileen that Tweety had taught me more at that hunt test than I than I would, than I knew myself. <laughs> and, uh, man, I was like, you know what? He's, he's right. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, she was, she, she was a great dog. She was a great dog. I really liked that dog. But, yeah, it was a, it was a blessing to have that much horsepower at my fingertips when I got out there. I mean, it was – they right. – Though, that group of dogs taught me a lot about running dogs. Uh, if you gave the wrong cast, those dogs told on you. If you operated at the ro- at the line the wrong way, those dogs told on you. That's how good they were. I mean, they mm. they they told on you if you made a mistake. So, um, ha- how about that for your first job at handling dogs? Is these no. great dogs that are going to make you look bad? You know. Yeah, it was it was a good one. So now, so let's fast forward. Um, okay. to now, Eric and Ellie, you got any more questions? Yep. No, I don't. Let's, let's move to, all right, let's fast forward now. to now. Um, you now own and operate your own, own kennel in, in Missouri. Show me retrievers. Um, tell us about that process. Um, I got some questions about that for some of the listeners out there. They're going to want to start their own kennel down the road someday and, and go out on their own and the difficulties of it. So tell us about that process. How's it going? Where you're at? Kind of what you guys are doing. Yeah, I uh, started Show Me Retrievers actually four years ago, right about this time. Um, it's It's been a lot of ups. It's been a lot of downs. Um, when I left FLK, I was literally coming back here. I was going to join a, an amateur field child group and, and go back to being an amateur and go back to my tree trimming job. Um, no more than I got across the state line. And, I mean, my phone was ringing. I, I did not expect that. I was uh, – uh, humbled, humbled. I, I, I wasn't a great dog handler. I wasn't a great dog trainer in my opinion. Um, uh, you know, I just didn't have that, that, I mean, I believed in myself. Don't get me wrong. And I knew, I, I knew what I was doing. I just didn't think I was a sought after. And anyways, uh, got started getting those phone calls. Um, had a very, very good first year. I had a very strong group of dogs, um, and hungry, 
uh, it, you know, when it's your so baby, on, on. just like I'm, I'm missing something. You were heading back and you were going to be a tree. You're planning on going to tree trimmer. How, what happened? You said you got phone calls. What exactly happened to take you from I'm going back to tree trimming to I have clients? What changed your trajectory <laughs> there? Once you, it's the weirdest thing I've had. I've had a, a few assistants go and do the same exact thing. Uh, and I, uh, and obviously I'm stuck where I'm at, but um, I think once you get this in your blood, um, it's always been in Eric's blood. He's, he's an animal guy. Like he is an animal. We talk hunting. We talk, Eric and I talk every day and it's usually about deer and turkeys and hunting and ducks and, but we're animal people. And I think once you get this in your blood, and you can say all you want, like, oh, I'm just going to give it up and, and go do this, or I'm going to give it up. I don't think you can. I don't. I, I just to think right. it's in you and who it's who you are. I know a lot of people who have left jobs and, you know, we're going to just go out and they're going to be selling insurance. They still may sell insurance, but they're training 10 dogs on the side. Right. Or they, they stay, or they go be a cop for a while. I know one, one of my buddies, he, went, went all, he left the business, went, went and been a cop, and now he's back to training full time. I, I think once you get into this deal, it's just in your blood, and then that's just it's who you are. And and correct me if I'm wrong, Eric. All it takes is one or two phone calls of somebody saying, "Hey, train my, will you train my dog for me?" And the next thing you know, you're like, "Well, hell yeah, let's go!" And next thing you know, it's blowing up. So and, then you just yeah. had a couple of people contact say, "Hey, I know I saw what you've done out there. Can you train my dog for me?" And you're like, "Oh my gosh, maybe I can, I can build this. Let's go." That's it. I mean, it it literally started off with one phone call and. uh uh, hey, hey, I heard you got so-and-so's dog. You want to do mine too? You know, and it, it just kept mm -hmm. on going and going and going until <laughs> I was like, hey, you know, this is what I'm going to do. You know, uh, hey, call it Chris up, scared to death. Like, uh, what? Hey, what's my decision-making process here, you know? And don't get me wrong, uh, Chris has been a, a heck of a friend and a heck of a teacher. Um but the the business side and the mentoring side on that side, he has done a great amount for for me on that as well. Um, just just showing me how to run the kennel, how to deal with people, um, all and all of that. I mean that that is mm -hmm. as much of owning a kennel as training the dogs. And Chris has always right. been there for me on that. So yeah, I mean, I literally got a couple phone calls, and the next thing I know, I'm getting more and more, and I'm like, Chris, is this a good idea? And he's like, Man, go for it. You know what I mean? Uh, call me when you need yeah. something. Uh, actually, he said, Hang on, let me let me let me call somebody for you. And he called Avery for me. It's like, Hey, Avery says call them. They'll give you you know they they'll sponsor you and, and give you some bumpers. And then I was like, Yeah, dang, that was awesome of you. You didn't have to do that. I mean, he was using his contacts to help me out. You mm -hmm. know, so right. Definitely appreciative of that. Very cool. How, how many dogs do you have out there now? Um, we're in the 50s right now. Uh, we hold 60. Um, nice. We're full at 60. Wow. Um, I've had 60. It's it's not a bad number for us. It's not a great number. I just like uh, I like giving my assistant trainers a few less dogs just to give that trainer dog interaction more time throughout the day. So we we we. Full is 60. I try not to be there. I try not to be there. So, but yeah, every, like I said, you know, we started four years ago and uh, just been climbing the mountain ever since. Um, four years ago, I started with a, with a blue Dodge and a topper. Uh, I remember buying my very first topper and being excited that I had a six hole topper. And uh, that's, and that's how I trained. I, I ran dogs and unfortunately my wife threw birds for me and, um, that was marriage counseling to the T whether, um, you know, <laughs> uh, instead of getting frustrated at a dog, I got frustrated at my wife. Hey, you didn't throw that right. Hey, you didn't make this correction. And yeah. she's like, I don't, what, what, what are you asking? Of that me, you know? for you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Hey, she threw birds for me today. She, she's good at it now. So, uh, it wasn't yeah. uh, her thing. It was probably a, a me trying to put the blame on somewhere else besides me or a dog, you know what I mean? So, but it worked, it got us to where we are now. You know, we went from a, a blue Dodge with a topper, um, hauling six dogs to, uh, a uh, little junk eight hole trailer. And then, uh, then I got my first big boy trailer moved up to my, uh, gooseneck and, uh, just kept on building from there. Um, don't, uh, this, this is a lot of smiles and a lot of laughing going on. That, that is not how that all worked out. There was a lot of crying and belly aching and stress along the way to, to get there. You know, now we got three rigs, um, three trainers, um, 
full steam ahead. But um, wow. Chris probably forgets all that building stuff because he's been doing it so long. But uh, uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't a, it wasn't always fun. Um, still isn't always fun. But uh, it, that's, it's that's, so difficult that's how um, we got here. It's, you know, it's it's so difficult because I didn't really learn by any, from anybody. I did it myself, you know, and then of course Eric came out and worked for me um, and, and has done a fantastic job out in his own. You know, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, I'm proud of me teaching him. I'm proud of him. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was really, really good, good, good mutual relationship. And we're still best friends to this day. We talk every day. Um, no, nobody really wants to know our conversation because they're pretty stupid, but um, <laughs> no. it, it's pretty bad, but, so Eric, so you've been doing it. This is your fourth year. Um, I know there's, I see, you see people all the time, you know, they're an assistant for a year or two and they go out on their own. You see it all, all day long. I, you know, I call them, you know, Bubba Gump kennels or, you know, mosquito pond retrievers or whatever you want to call it. But what, if, if, what's the, what was the hardest thing for you leaving like our program and, and starting on your own? What was, what's, what's the, what was the hardest thing for you to do to, to get that going? Oh man, the whole thing. I mean, how do you narrow it down to one thing? Uh, the money to come up with equipment, the money to be playing employees, um, the ground to do all this, uh, everything. I mean, everything is tough. Uh, it, you know, it's, I mean, you say it best when you say, you know, it's not all Frisbees and tennis balls. It, it is not, you know, I mean, it is a, it's a stiff climb. I mean, the whole thing is a, a fight and a struggle. Um, the hardest thing is disappointing my very first client uh, or, or, or still today oh, disappointing man. a client. Uh, I mean, Aiken says it best, you know, not every little league star is going to make, make it into the major leagues. You know what I mean? That, that, that the little league is, is the, the top of where some kids baseball careers go. I mean, the, after little league, they're, they're done, they're gone. They're, they're not, they're not going any farther. And, you know, you get somebody that brings you over a dog and you, I always refer to my dog training career is, Hey, you look at a dog for great pedigree. Well, you look at a trainer for great pedigree too. You know what I mean? Um, in my, in my pedigree of training, I got great trainers that have mentored me, you know, um, so they expect a certain level of a dog to come out of here. Well, when those demands haven't been met because the, there's not enough dog, um, that's a whole nother podcast. When you run out of dog, um, you can, you can mm-hmm. train an animal and train it and train it and train it. If there's not enough dog there to handle everyday training, to handle the, the intelligence, um, of, of completing what you're asking it to do, you run out of dog. And that was probably my very hardest thing I ever had experience on my own is, is literally coming up short for the very first time. And, uh, it was hard. That's not who I am. Uh, it's not who I ever want to be. Uh, that was probably still a day, the thing that I struggle with the most. And, I get it. You're not going to make everybody happy, but uh, um, there are those 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 dogs that don't do great. But uh, like I said, I, I'm is. still trying that, to make the is. best dog out of every dog, I, and I I still haven't learned it. I, I haven't learned. Aiken said it the best. I, I have a hard word. I have a hard time with the word no. Um, I, I'm going to take a dog, and I'm going to try to make a grand champion out of every one of them. And it's hard for me to say, hey, I've done all I can. This dog is not going to be any better of a dog because I feel like more work, more effort is going to make that dog better. And that's not the case. One of the hardest lessons I ever learned at FLK was not training a dog to the to a full setup every single day. You know, I have a dog and it's struggling a little bit. And Chris is like, hey, quit quit doing a full setup with this dog every day. Hey, take it out back and, you know, run some run some, run the tea with it. I'm, Chris, it's a finished level dog. Why would I just run tea with it? Well, to, to, to let it de-stress, you know, it, it knows how to run the tea. It's, it's not going to make any mistakes. Well, I'm not working hard enough. This dog's not working hard enough to progress. And, you know, so I'm sneaking it in the next setup and, um, uh, and I, I run every setup every week, every day that week with it. And, and I, the next week, Chris is looking at that dog going, Hey, this dog's not making an improvement. Why? And, I'm over here biting my tongue saying, Hey man, I ain't gave it a break. I've, <laughs> I've worked it every day. And he's looking at me like, Hey, slow down. You can go forwards by, by not doing so much. And then I, you know, scaled it back, take that dog back and do something easy, you know, start some pattern blinds with it, with this finished dog. Um, so I'm doing some pattern blinds in the morning and that's all that dog got. 
And let me tell you something, that dog, you know, it, it, it got a full setup on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on, on the other two days, it, it just got patterned blind. Something it could complete without mindless. It was mindless. The dog knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, there was no thinking involved. And that dog started progressing. Well, that's a, that is a hard, hard lesson for Eric Tizon to learn is you can work too much and it's a it's a bad result. That's not who I am. I want to go, 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 go. I want to try harder, 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 harder to get more results. And that's not how every dog works. Well, mm. and that's the hardest to this day. Even I've been doing it for 25. This is my 20. This is disgusting to say. This is my 24th year um, doing it as a professional. And to this day, that's the hardest thing that I have to do is, is disappoint a client or or whatever and or and you know not all my my always saying is you know not every kid not every kid isn't michael jordan's kids are not michael jordan and that's really hard to tell somebody and and disappoint somebody like that but here's the thing if disappointing somebody gets easy for you it's time to quit and mm -hmm. and one thing about eric quitting is is not in his dna and quitting is not in my dna so um you know, for them young trainers that are getting out there and try to do it themselves, good luck. Um, things are tough right now, and it, it's not always cupcakes and rainbows, you know. But, Eric, what – um, so we're getting ready to head to the Grand. Um, what What is – let me let me let me think about this. You know what? You got something? I got a question. I, I got to figure it out in my head how I'm going to answer this. You got to ask this. Do you have a question, Elliot? Um, well, you haven't said how people can find you, and I know that you're on Instagram. I know you're on Facebook. Tell everyone how they can find you if they're looking for you. Yeah, we're Show Me Retrievers on Facebook and Instagram. We do a little bit of stuff on um, oh, Snapchat and – What's the other one, boys? That makes me that makes me sound old. He is um, Elliot. He is a he is a social media influencer. It, it, the, the 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 social media coming out of Show Me Retrievers is something to behold. Let me tell you, they they put boats out there and ribbons and like pom poms. You gotta see some of the stuff they get on Facebook. It's it's actually really really impressive, and I like to comment on that stuff a lot of times. Like really up up you know uplifting comments and stuff on on his, on his <laughs> social media uh, we all well you know when he was with you at flk flk when, <laughs> when he was with you at flk i know that flk actually posted on instagram a few times <laughs> ouch 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 chris told like me he's gonna give like me the keys to the instagram but he never sent it oh i'll get hey, it right let now me, let I, me like, know let me explain a little bit of this okay there's an excuse for everything right <laughs> When Chris first started out, I mean, the SRS was huge. He was on TV that they, that was their exposure to the world. Um, mm -hmm. SRS isn't on TV quite anymore. Um, it, it is on um, some streams, but not, not on ESPN, you know? So for a small kennel, I can't tell you what Facebook has done for my kennel. I mean, it lets people know that I'm out here. Um, social media is a great thing um, and, and it can be a bad right. thing. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's been a great thing um, for our kennel. It lets our clients know where we've been, where we're going, what we're doing. Um, and everybody loves to see little Fido's you know, picture on, on Facebook. They share it to their friends. It's been a great tool for our kennel. Chris gives me a lot of, a lot of, crap over it but uh it's it's been great uh i don't think yeah, but you have a whole this is you have a whole social media department i mean doesn't jesse isn't he the president of your social media department can oh, he do that for you let's not even go there let's not go there <laughs> but it's it's been a big part of who we are and it lets our it, it's another tool to, to let clients know what we're doing and and uh client interaction and those guys, uh, you know, I mean, for sure, I, I, I do a setup and uh, and some days I get a lot of phone calls about, hey, hey, how'd my dog do on this? Or, hey, how, you know, my dog has a problem doing that and I see you're addressing it today. Uh, how do you do? You know, so it just, uh, it's a it's another tool. It's another tool that we're using out right. there. So I can't say that we don't right. have a big social media following or social media presence, but uh, I enjoy it. Um, I know my clients enjoy it and that's why we do it. 
Well, you're good at it. There's Chris. no. I like to give you grief about it, but you are good at it. There's no, no doubt about that. I, I'm too busy training dogs to put it on social media, but. Um, oh, here we go. Do, here we go. You do, you do a good job. <laughs> Eric's spending all of his time on social media and none of his time training, right, Eric? <laughs> Let, let's let's figure. Hey, let's all remember this. I worked at FLK. I know how it works. <laughs> well, I, I have a suspicion that Eric is the reason that uh, Chris called me back when I contacted about a partnership and a dog because I think you guys were in the truck together and Chris got the email. And I, I have this feeling that Eric's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Because I got a phone call from Chris. Like, Chris, or you want to tell back, the truth? Like, immediately. I actually don't remember. I'm sure I'm sure he's going to say it was his idea for sure. I, I don't, Honestly, Elliot, I, I, he might have steered me in that direction to give you a dog. And, and I'm, that's not like me. But um, I think I actually think <laughs> he did. That's what I. That's what yeah, I kind of was, put the pieces together because it's not like like oh, YouTube promotion. Yeah, that sounds like me. I doubt you said that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I promise you, that's not how that conversation went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, and then when Elliot showed up to when Elliot showed up to pick up his puppy, I, I, Eric got pushed in the back like you go back there and don't talk. I'm like, hey, Elliot, hey, I was part of this, you know. <laughs> Chris, like, go hide. Don't stand behind oh, that. Don't stand behind that five gallon bucket. We don't want to see you. Uh, ouch! Ouch! <laughs> just stand under the. Just go stand under the plates. Just go stand <laughs> under the plates. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Well, did should we wrap out this your up, question, I, Chris? I didn't. I. It's my head is spinning so much. Um. Yeah. Let's do this. We were going to talk a little bit about grand preparation, but let's go ahead and push that to the beginning of the next episode. We'll do a quick yeah. grand preparation segment, and then we'll go into a bunch yeah. of Q and A stuff on the because next one. Because if, if people that know Eric and I, we literally could ramble for hours about the dumbest things that are not anybody's interest at all, and it could get out of hand on this deal. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I know I Eric, very you, uh, intelligent things. Chris just doesn't understand them. Uh, that is <laughs> that's true. But um, I know Eric and I will be seeing each other here in about a little over a week, about a week and a half. Cause we're getting ready to train for the grand in Georgia with our grand group, which is Eric's of course is part of, but um, um, we'll be, we'll be seeing each other about a week and a half and getting after it. All right. Well, great. So um, thank you everyone for listening again. Next episode's coming out in two weeks from the Wednesday where this is released and we're going to have Eric back on here again. And we're going to talk about preparation for the grand and we've got lots of questions from the podcast group over at Facebook. That's where it's all happening. So Facebook flatliner kennels podcast group is where you want to be to get some of your questions answered and just to interact with all these guys over there. So make sure that you head over and do that and also follow Eric over on Instagram and Wherever else that he is, in any he's last on thing, Insta you guys want to snap a gram and and he, he, what well, you got a doggy OnlyFans, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on the OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. All right, guys, thank you for joining us, everybody. Eric, thank you. Um, we'll do the next episode here pretty quick, guys. Um, see everybody at the line. Take dead aim. Gotta strike this chord with the And blue collar scars mm -hmm. And never and bleed are gonna get the way If you don't take that fire, take it to the grave